this is not a whitewash. This is a, an honest story about my grandpa, about the man that he was. The timing of the film is propitious in that it's his 100th birthday coming up. I think it's important for people to hear the people who knew Walt Disney best, the people who worked for him and his family, tell the stories themselves. I mean, imagine to tell the story of a man who, in Peter Allenshaw's words, was an ordinary man with extraordinary talents. That enigma, that, that, that riddle, is what we were after. to see them all light up and to see them all get smiles and beam um, when they're referring to my grandpa and, and the years that they worked with him, it, it, it's, it's pretty exciting. It was very interesting going to Marceline and uh, seeing where he grew up and seeing where he got so many of his ideas. The whole town was blocked off so we could do the, the big master shop going down Main Street. Action! which uh, the village claims it was really the model for the Main Street in Disneyland. Uh, and, and of course, the uh, farm where uh, Walt uh, lived uh, no longer exists in its original form, but we were trying to, to at least evoke the atmosphere of a typical farm in the 1910s, 1920s. We wanted to create the feeling of being on a farm with lots of animals. And uh, we struggled with that. We had lots of animals brought in, but they somehow didn't take very kindly to my direction. So it was quite a, a task to get them to appear on camera as we wanted them to be. I'm sure Walt would have done a much better job. Uh, and then he found out that uh, live actors were cheaper than, uh, <laughs> than the cartoonists. I think it's important that we do this film now because uh, a lot of uh, these people that worked so close to him and knew him um, are getting on in age. Um, they're telling the story how it was firsthand. Mark, please. Yeah. And action. Uh, in the case of Mark Davis, it was a, uh, a very sad thing and yet, yet a very uh, a great gift to all of us that he joined us, though he was ill at the time. Uh, he, of course, Mark Davis, was one of the Walt's nine old men. We were doing. And uh, in essence, I think we created that business. And just weeks after he did what I thought was a terrific interview with us, he passed on. And so the interview, which we are featuring of him in the documentary, was the last he did. The wonderful thing about the home movies is that they go back so far that there were movies taken in the 1920s so we could we could actually see the people that we had just heard about and many of the things that the family told us about the way he was with them or the relationship with the family um, just we could see how true it was because there was such um, emotion affection portrayed in the movies themselves. Of course, these home movies have not been seen before. They have stayed in the, in the archives of the Disney family all this time. And this is the first time that we're bringing them out and airing them on television. So that in itself is a very unique aspect of this film. Guess what? Walt says, well, let's give him a ride. So I drive off, get around the other side of the sub ride, and Nixon lets out a big uh, hoop when he sees that all the Secret Service are on the platform, which means none of them are in the train, which means I'm, I just was heart sick because I now knew I had just kidnapped the pro Vice President of the United States. When you talk to people who knew Walt Disney, um, you find that many of them have different impressions of him, that he was in a way a different person to everyone that he worked with. It's almost opposites sometimes, um, in that he was a perfectionist and demanding, sometimes impatient at the studio, and his family, who have been fairly private up to this point, really reveal a whole, uh, a whole other side of him, a different, a different man who was patient, who was not demanding, who was always willing to spend time with them, uh, and, and who also was very affectionate with them. 
we are a very private family, but uh, this is something that's very dear to our heart and very important for my mom to set the record straight um, because there have been so many inaccuracies about my grandpa. And uh, my grandpa was just a normal man. He was a, a very talented man, but he led a normal life. When you consider that Walt Disney is a man who passed on over three decades ago, the fact that these men and women in speaking of him spoke of him in some cases in the present tense, but in many cases with the kind of passion one would feel toward a father, toward a best friend. They all come to life and there is this passion and this great respect that uh, they still have for the man. People have often asked me, uh, what's Walt Disney's biggest asset? Well, how would you describe him the best thing? And I think the totality of Walt Disney. He was so basic and so simple, so honest, down to earth, such a simple person. To work with us, to, you know, get along like he did. No CEO would do that with any bunch of people, I don't think, other than Walt. I think at this point there's a danger of Walt Disney becoming just a, a, a corporate symbol, an icon, and people forgetting that this was really a man and that there is so much more to him than Mickey Mouse or Snow White or any one of his creations, that there was so much about this individual that, that you can admire and that you can look to as, as an important person. Our aim has always been to make this a timeless effort, to make this film as timeless as it deserves to be given its subject matter. Uh, we haven't shot on video, we shot on widescreen film for the film look, but also because, as Wald would have said, let's aim for the next available technology, and in this case, that is HDTV. So we've, we've shot the entire program on 16 by 9 HDTV compatible film because probably will go there in the future. I think I would hope that it would inspire young people. Walt Disney's life was one in which he repeatedly triumphed over obstacles, repeatedly risked everything he had in order to do something better, in order to do something greater, in order to accomplish something that no one had before. And I would hope that young people who, based on the young people I know, are sometimes inclined to be jaundiced and inclined to think that everything that's worth doing has already been done, would view this film and take courage and take hope and take inspiration from the story of Walt Disney. So on behalf of myself and my staff, I'd like to thank you for this wonderful honor. And to you and my friend Emile, merci et bonsoir. <laughs>